What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're at Billy's house right now. He is working on the headlight project as you guys probably saw in the last video. Um, but I am going to go ahead and start, kind of start with the FRS turbo install. First off, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to start with wrapping the headers and the other pipes. So stay tuned for that and we're going to go ahead and get started. So, so as I said guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the headers themselves, the down pipe, and uh, this other pipe over here as well. Now, the wrap of the kit did come with, it was just, there wasn't very much of it. So I had this sitting around, again, some black fiberglass um, heat wrap. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. I was gonna use it on the FJ, but I'll just buy some more. But yeah, so we're gonna wrap everything black and then we're gonna get on to the next parts of the install. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so I'm not gonna wrap over the flex pipe itself. So I'm probably just gonna do a strip here, do a strip here first. Uh, I'm probably gonna finish off this little section and then I will probably do strip here, strip here, and then with the last one over here, I'll probably finish it out and then wrap up the collector here up to the uh, bracket up top. All right, guys, so we went ahead and started cutting pieces. However, I have heard that you're supposed to soak your fiberglass heat wrap. Um, I wasn't going to because it was actually bending really simply, but as soon as we started cutting it, there was a lot of fiberglass particles in the air. So I went ahead and just went ahead and soaked everything just to kind of eliminate that uh, particle, I guess, going airborne and all that, just because I really don't want to breathe that in. So might want to soak your fiberglass or your heat wrap before you go ahead and install everything so we're going to go ahead and see what how that works all right guys got one little segment started here so what we went ahead and did is we started back here by the flex pipe itself worked our way back towards the uh top here um we did some stainless steel zip ties using your needle nose pliers over there we just got it twisted and basically twisted and the tight and zip ties down everything is real nice and tight we probably did um close to a half inch overlap on uh or I mean, sorry, probably yeah, half inch to three quarters of an inch overlap between the strips around here. So uh, first time doing this, so I don't think it's too bad. All right guys, and a quick little side note, definitely wear something with rubber coated gloves and probably gonna be using a mask here to finish this off just because even though we have soaked it, there are a lot of fiberglass particles. You kind of see them up here on the FJ um, floating around. So probably gonna get a mask before I keep going. So just so you guys know. All right guys, there you go again. Went ahead to the next pipe next to that one up to the flex pipe. I said, um, when you're doing this, make sure you're always keeping in good tension on the heat wrap itself. Again, keeping that spacing pretty consistent across the way. We did two of these stainless steel zip ties on this one, but the single seems to be holding all right. So we're gonna see if we can make it last with the singles, but if not, we'll add another one in there. So looking good so far. All right, guys, so the headers are done. Everything is wrapped up, looking real good, I think. Um, again, then we have this piece here. The O2 bungs, we have them covered up right now. I'm gonna cut those all out. So uh, this will not be covered once we finish everything up. But uh, for right now, it looks fine. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the last pipe here and we'll be done with this part. And there we go, guys. So all the pipes are now wrapped. So that step is done with the kit. As I said, basically what you're gonna do um, with the header itself just wrap the individual pieces. I guess you could wrap the flex pipe if you wanted to. Um, your choice on that one. I left it just so it can keep that flex action um, up here. Went ahead and did a pipe here. Um, wrapped a little section there. Wrapped this small section. And then with this piece, went all the way up and then finished it up into the catch area. Um, so that all came out really nice. Kept it tight the whole time. Over here, same thing. And right there. All right, now that we have all of our, basically all our headers and all that stuff wrapped with our exhaust pipe, we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next step of basically pre-install stuff before we get outside to the car. So because this is a ball bearing turbo, you do have four basically lines coming in and out of it. You have two oil lines and you have two water lines. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and install those and then we're gonna get on to the next part of this. So stay tuned. All right, so first off, what we're gonna do is after you get the bag that has all the oil fittings in it, it's gonna be this little three prong package here. There were stuff in each of these little sections. Um, it's inside of one of your own basically tube line packages. So once you get that out of your box, first thing you're gonna get is your oil feed fitting. So this oil feed fitting, again, it's just basically threaded on both ends. This is going to screw into the turbo 
where the section with the oil restrictor is. So if you look, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but there is an oil restrictor down in there. So that is where this fitting is going to go. So once you get that all screwed in, you are gonna use the 90 degree fitting that comes with the package as well. This should be in the same little section inside of that package. So all you're gonna do here for clearance purposes, all you're gonna be doing is basically screwing that on to that same exact fitting. Then from there, you are gonna have your oil line that is gonna go to the block, which is in this package here, just a stainless steel braided line in there. Uh, we're not gonna put that on just quite yet, but so this is all you're gonna to need to do for this step. So now we're gonna go on to the next fittings. So just for demonstration purposes, I went ahead and installed that stainless steel line. Again, it's gonna be for the oil in. Um, as you guys can see, it's just gonna screw in there and you're gonna screw that directly into the block. So now we're gonna go ahead and talk about next about the oil drain. Okay guys, on that oil drain, now when you guys see your oil drain, it will have a slight bend. So if you just basically orientate that bend towards this side of the turbo, basically it's gonna be pointing towards the driver's side or the, uh, basically the oil pan. Uh, just kind of promotes that drain just coming out of there. What you are gonna have to do is you do have two nuts, or two bolts, sorry, one on the other side here, and there is a black gasket that comes with the kit. It's gonna be in the same packaging as this. So you're gonna be installing that gasket as well as your oil drain with the two bolts on either side. Now you might have to clock the turbo. I did not want to. Um, it was a little bit of a pain. You do have to kind of finagle your wrench up in there. Um, you can see where the nut is or the bolt is. So if you guys want, you can do that. So hopefully I will have clearance once I get everything installed inside the car. It is a little tight. Basically you can see it sitting here. Um, we'll have to kind of see how that fits in there. Um, once I go into uh, getting the actual base of thing mounted up. So if I do need to clock it, what we will have to do is loosen these bolts all the way around the bottom of the turbo here. And basically, once you get all those loosened up, because they are basically just clamping it down, you should be able to twist everything. So we're gonna see if we have to do that later on. So next up, we're gonna go to our coolant lines. We're gonna be utilizing these fittings here. They are on a swivel, basically, action here. Um, you have some basically copper washers that go on top there for gasketing material and all that. So what we're gonna end up doing is actually putting this guy into the turbo in this fill sport, basically facing the, uh, the oil inlet line as well. So we're gonna be, everything's gonna be facing this way. The only thing that is a little bit difficult is getting that fit in there without taking off this bolt, which is the bracket for the wastegate, which is over there, you can see. So here's the, uh, the bolt here holding on the wastegate. So you might have to pull this bolt off to get this fitting installed. Um, this is a 12 millimeter, I am pretty sure. Yep, so it's a 12 millimeter. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull that off and we're gonna go ahead and install that fitting and then we'll go on to the last fitting. Now, once you get that bolt loosened and basically taken off here, um, the big thing is to make sure that when you are installing, oops, when you are installing your fitting here, make sure that you actually take off, because on my kit, both the copper washers were up top in the packaging. Make sure you take off one of those crush washers. Basically keep one on top there, reinstall, your swivel and then put the crush washer back on the bottom now you have a watertight seal and everything will seal up really nice again installing that fitting and you'll be good to go and then once you get everything tightened down make sure then you put your wastegate bolt back on and then on to the last fitting over here again another one of those coolant lines um, moving that one wash that's stacked up top to have one on either side here you're going to install into the last little port here on the turbo and you can see they're both going to be facing up basically towards the hood once everything is installed so basically just mash them up and you'll be good to go all right, so now the turbo is basically prepped and ready to go into the car. We have all our fittings installed, our oil in, oil out, our coolant in and out. Again, these don't really matter. These are just basically, uh, no matter what, you're getting coolant circulating through the system. So either way, you're gonna be fine with those. So next up, the big thing is going to be hooking up the coolant lines and all that stuff in the car. So the kit does come with these hookups here. These are a Subaru Forester. Uh, these come with a Subaru Forester when you have it. Um, again, our engines are the same. So the thing is, Basically, these are gonna be your hookups that you would use for getting your coolant from the engine. But supposedly, you can basically utilize the uh, the loop up there on the throttle body, which we're gonna see later on in the video, but utilizing the hose that is included with the kit. So basically, you can just map it straight from that throttle body, um, however long that distance is, and just map it into your inlet and outlet port, which supposedly should be a little bit easier. So we're gonna try that out. So we'll go ahead and get to the next All right, one. now I have re-boxed up the turbo. Basically, let's put it back into the box, um, put a bunch of the other parts back in here pulled out the headers and the other pipes. Again, as you guys can see, the wrap came out very nice and everything. So what we are going to go ahead and do now is prep. We're gonna put on the little heat shield that goes here. So we're gonna utilize the bolts that came with the little kit. They are black, they're a little hex key. 
So we're gonna utilize those. Um, also, this came in today as well. This is my new drift armor front bash bar for the FRS. Um, we're gonna get a little bit more clearance, which may should make things fit a little bit better with the uh, with everything going up in the front end. So I won't have to trim the stock crash bar. But yeah, great fast shipping everything. Again, drift armor. So if you guys are looking for that front bumper, I think this one was about 150 ish. So yeah, great product. And as I said, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is actually getting maybe even like a light bar mount where you're gonna clip on uh, the clamps here that have the studs sticking off them. And I'm actually gonna probably mount that Mishimoto oil cooler that way. So we'll see how that goes. Now that we have the heat shield all bolted up, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prep it again. We're gonna add the studs in. So you're gonna get the stud package here. Again, these are just gonna screw in there real nice. We're gonna have a gasket that we're gonna use before we put the turbo on up top. So again, we're gonna screw the studs in. Um, you could probably tighten it down with a pair of vice grips on that little thick fat part if you wanted to. Um, and then you do have your hardware for when you actually do end up mounting the turbo on there. So we're gonna get that done now. And just so you guys know, one of these is not threaded. So I assume we're probably gonna have either a full bolt or maybe there's a stud coming from the opposite way. We'll figure that out here in a second. But what we did do is I went ahead and screwed the nut on, almost like doing your uh, your wheel lug nuts and all that stuff. Basically, just get on there nice and tight, and then you can tighten down your studs. So that's another little trick you guys can do when you're just tightening these bad boys down. So there you go, guys. So now everything is installed. Um, I went ahead and just left the hardware on there just so I don't lose it. Um, basically, everything is prepped. We have everything wrapped. Turbo is all set up, ready to go. All the other parts are wrapped. The only thing I can say for you guys, I got the pre welded oil pan so I didn't have to worry about adding in the fitting over here on the side. Um, the only other prep thing you guys would have to do is pull the oil pan off the car and then actually weld in that fitting if you guys did not get the oil pan itself. But I think that'll about do it. So we are going to go ahead and move outside now. We're gonna get everything out there and we're gonna start disassembly and then begin the install.